teacher and author of The Smoothie Book. And I'm here to talk to you every week about nutrition topics. This week is all about the jalapeno pepper. We're going to talk about what it is, so the history, some information about it, the different types, the different cuisines and recipes that use jalapeno peppers, some nutrition and health information, and a recipe for cheesy baked jalapeno poppers. Super excited about that. Cheesy baked jalapeno poppers. <clears throat> so, if you have any questions or comments, please add those to the chat. Love having a conversation about the daily topic. So please join in and let's get started. So we're gonna mix things up a little bit today. We're gonna start with a recipe so I can put, pop them in the oven and so that you can see the final product during the show because it only takes 12 minutes to bake. Okay, so let's get started on our recipe called Cheesy Baked Jalapeno Poppers. You can find it on relish.com. And I'm super excited about this. I don't know if I've ever made, I'm gonna move this a little bit. I don't know if I've ever made uh, jalapeno poppers before, but I've definitely eaten them at restaurants and they're so good. Okay, so we're gonna start off. I cut the recipe in half because it calls for eight jalapenos. I just wanted to do four because it's just two of us eating them. So I have already started off. So you're supposed to slice them in half, remove the membranes and the seeds. So, I've already done that because after you do that, you need to wash your hands if you're not wearing gloves. And I wasn't wearing gloves, so I didn't want to have to leave you waiting while I washed my hands. So these are the halves. So we're going to talk a little bit later about the membranes, but the membranes are that white part in there. That's where the heat is in the peppers. Okay, so we've got four. Cut them in half, scooped out. I used a spoon to scoop out the seeds and the membranes. Okay. Now let's work on the filling. Okay, <clears throat> so we're gonna start off with cream cheese. I happen to have some cream cheese, so I thought this is perfect. We will we'll make jalapeno poppers. So two ounces of cream cheese. So I'm estimating here, but that's about right. Okay, so we've got that, and then half of a cup of cheddar cheese. The recipe says one cup of cheddar cheese, but we're cutting the recipe in half. And these jalapenos are on the smaller end, so we won't need quite as much filling. Oh boy, this already looks good. <laughs> Anything with cheddar cheese and cream cheese combined is probably going to be delicious. Okay, next is green onion. So, I actually happen to have some green onion from a different recipe from last week, so that was nice. And garlic powder. Always have a garlic powder on hand in this household. Okay. <laughs> I put it in here and I already got stuff. Okay, so garlic powder. Okay, I just want to be sure that it's not all in one place. it all up. Make sure that the garlic powder is evenly distributed. I'm actually going to shake a little bit more on top so that we for sure know this is Trader Joe's garlic powder. Okay, so that we for sure know that we've got garlic powder involved. Okay, super excited for happy hour today because we are going to have these in our house. Okay, so that's the filling. Cream cheese, cheddar cheese, green onion, garlic powder, that's it. Okay, next we are going to start stuffing the peppers. All right, super easy. So we just spoon it in, just a little bit in each one. So let's see. Want it to be fully stuffed, so not that much. So it's a little, you know, a little bit on top too. All right, so we've got one, we've got seven to go. So I can just tell these are going to be delicious. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You know, sometimes you can do bacon wrapped 
version. That's always good. I didn't do that for today. I just figured these will be just as delicious without the bacon, but bacon's always an option. I mean, why not? Bacon makes everything taste better. Our son is basically a vegetarian, but he eats bacon. <laughs> That's the only meat he'll eat, is bacon. Okay, and let's see, we're almost done. Oh boy, this is gonna be so good. We got two to go. All right, and then, really excited to talk about jalapeno peppers because I learned a lot in the research that I did for today's show, I learned a lot. Okay, next, whoops, okay, here we go. Okay, I think everybody is nicely stuffed. Okay, now the next part is we have an egg that I have scrambled, and we have panko breadcrumbs right here. We're just gonna dip them in the egg and the breadcrumbs, and then actually put our pan right here so that I can just pop them on. Everything's about popping today. Okay, <laughs> so we take the cheese part, dip it in the egg, oh yeah, and then dip it in the breadcrumbs. Yum. Okay, and we'll do that for the rest. This is super easy. Dip it in the egg, dip it in the breadcrumbs. Make a little song out of that. Dip it in the egg, dip it in the breadcrumb. Okay, or the panko crumbs, I guess. Kind of the same. Kind of the same, but just a little bit different. Oops, the filling fell off. That's okay. You can just feel around and get the filling back. <laughs> that one was a loose one. Okay. Dip it in the egg. Dip it in the breadcrumbs. If you make these, you'll have to sing that song. Okay. Dip it in the egg. Oops. It in there, dip it in the breadcrumbs. Two more to go. Dip it in the egg. Dip it in the breadcrumbs. One more to go. Dip it in the egg. Oops. Dip it in the breadcrumbs. Okay, that's it. That's all we have to do. Not bad, huh? Not bad. Okay, now we just pop them in the oven. Okay, we pop it in the oven. 10 to 12 minutes. So I'm going to do 10 minutes. I'm always conservative about that. Just in case I don't want things to be getting burnt. So we have everything, everything done. I love when a recipe is just so easy like that. That's it. That is it. Now we just have to wait for it to cook and wait for the fun. Okay, so let's talk about jalapenos. Oh, hey, Kelly. Looks like a great happy hour at your place tonight. I know, I know. I wish you could all come over and have some happy hour with us because it's going to be delicious. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of white wine. It's going to be good. Um, okay, so jalapenos, what are they? They are a medium-sized chili pod from the... Capsicum anum family. A mature jalapeno is usually two to four inches in length. They're usually picked while they're still green, but sometimes they're kept on the vine or the plant longer and they can turn yellow, orange, or red. So the name jalapeno comes is a Spanish word from jalapa, spelled with an X or a J which is the capital of the city of Veracruz, Mexico, where the pepper was traditionally cultivated. Typically, this is so interesting, typically a plant produces 25 to 35 pods, which is awesome. So Rafael, my husband, he planted some jalapeno plants this year, and I went out to get one, and I was like, oh my gosh, there's so many peppers in here. Like I would lift a leaf and oh my gosh, there's two more. Oh my gosh, there are four more. Oh my gosh. So 
I believe it, that they produce 25 to 35 pods. We have been using them all of the past late summer and into the fall. So they're awesome. So jalapenos can grow in a lot of different soils, a lot of different temperatures. They prefer warm temperature if, as long as they're getting enough water. So that's why they grew pretty well here in the Northwest because it was warm in the summer. <clears throat> uh, the jalapeno was a Mexican chili, but it was adopted by Texas as the state pepper in 1995. And the majority of U.S. jalapenos are grown in New Mexico, Texas, and California, although a lot of other small farms in the Southwest grow them as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sometimes when we cut peppers in our house, it like gets in the air and it makes you kind of cough. Okay, so capsaicin is the active compound in jalapenos that give it that heat and also give the health benefits. So this is, <clears throat> this is interesting. So the, the highest concentration of capsaicin, the heat, is in the membrane. So the membrane is that white part right on the inside. So a lot of times people say it's the seeds. Well, that's kind of true. The seeds... The seeds that are in that part of the membrane are going to receive some of that capsaicin, some of that heat. So yes, you, you do get a little bit of the heat from the seeds only because they're attached to the membrane. The membrane is where all the heat is. So if you want a pepper to be less spicy or less hot, take the membrane and the seeds out. You'll reduce the heat level significantly. Okay. <clears throat> The, so they're called membranes or ribs. And this is just another piece of information I found out that chipotles are smoked ripe jalapenos. I did not know that, but I thought that was really cool. Uh, piece of information. Okay, so I just wanted to address this because it came up a lot in my research, the Scoville pepper scale. So all chili peppers are on the scale to determine a heat unit. So the SHU, the Scoville heat unit. So that ranges from zero all the way up to over a million, which is insane. So zero would be a red bell pepper because there's no heat. Jalapenos are, they land, you know, it, the heat level can vary, but they typically are 3,500 to 8,000 in the Scoville heat. I just remembered I didn't put the timer on. I better do that. I've probably been talking, let's just do seven minutes. I've probably been talking three. Okay, something like that. Okay, so anyway, jalapenos range from about 3,500 to 8,000, some say 10,000 in the heat range in the SHU, the Scoville heat units. Um, so yeah, so red bell pepper is zero. A ghost pepper, some say could be over a million. So jalapenos are spicy, but not crazy spicy, but they can be, <laughs> they can be on the upper end. Uh, so this is also interesting. So, so let's see. So this is a smooth pepper and this is a pepper. See those little lines all over it. That's, those are called scars or sometimes it's called corking, I guess maybe because it looks like a cork, but, um, those are scars, so see those lines. So that means it's gonna be a hot pepper, that, that the heat level is gonna be hot. So some people look at that and say, ooh, I don't want that one because it's gonna be hot, but some people say, ooh, that's gonna be great, it's gonna be hot, especially if you're gonna use the peppers for pickling or keeping them in oil. Those are good. Those are good for that. So, or if you just like it spicy. Uh, I used all smooth ones for our poppers today. Um, and the heat level for the, for, for the pod, the pepper can vary in within the plant too. So, you know, you pick one, it's spicy, you pick another one, not necessarily going to be the same. So that was interesting too. And as they ripen, they get hotter. So if it ripens to red on the plant, that's going to be way hotter than one that you pulled from the plant as green earlier. Lots of information. 
So what are there? So there are four common varieties of jalapeno peppers. I'm going to tell you about those. One is the senorita. The senorita jalapeno pepper is dark green and eventually turns purple and then turns red um, when it's finally mature. The plant grows to about two feet tall. And hello. And it is also very spicy. So or there's heat. So it registers at about 5,000 in the Scoville heat unit, the SHU. There's the Fresno chili. And that's a jalapeno pepper that is related to the senorita pepper, but it is, it takes less time to grow and it's smaller and it has a milder fruit. So on the Scoville range, it is like 300 to 400. So much milder than the senorita. Then there's the Sierra Fuego, which Fuego means hot or, um, or fire. So that um, means that it's gonna have you know, some heat. Uh, it's mildly hot, it grows from dark green to red, and it is a hybrid and it produces, produces a lot of peppers on each plant. And then there's the Mucho Nacho. It is a fast maturing hybrid. It can reach um, maturity in 68 days, which you know, that's pretty fast, um, like two months. And the peppers from these plants are a little bit longer than the typical ones that we see. And it's known for its large size and it's flavorful without having a ton of heat. So there we go. So what recipes and cuisines use jalapeno? We're gonna talk about three different cuisines, all different kinds of recipes within those cuisines that use them. Mexican cuisine, American cuisine slash Tex-Mex, and Vietnamese. So Mexican cuisine, Stuffed jalapenos are popular. They're hollowed out, stuffed with seafood or meat or poultry or cheese. Then there's pickled jalapenos. Um, they're often served whole or sliced alongside a meal. Um, then there's chiles torreados. Torreados. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, are fresh jalapenos sauteed in oil and then until the skin is blistered all over and then sometimes they're served with melted cheese on top. That sounds delicious to me. And then of course, fresh chopped jalapenos are often used in salsas. And then American and or Tex-Mex um, cuisine, jalapeno jelly is a popular, um, popular item. It originated in Texas and it's used, you know, for so many different things. It can be used as a glaze on chicken wings. It can be used alongside cream cheese or on top of cream cheese as a dip, like with crackers or chips. Uh, jalapenos are often muddled in beverages like margaritas, delicious. Jalapeno poppers, we're making those today. That's a very popular appetizer with cream cheese, sometimes wrapped in bacon. So good. And then I learned about this, an armadillo egg it, as a food, because um, it looks like an armadillo egg, it's not actually an armadillo egg, is basically a jalapeno popper wrapped with sausage, wrapped with bacon, then grilled until the bacon and the sausage are cooked. So I guess it looks like an armadillo egg. Oh my goodness. Sounds really good and really rich. Kind of like a scotch egg, which is an egg hard boiled egg wrapped with sausage, wrapped with breading, and that's deep fried. Kind of the same concept, I guess. So I would be very interested in trying that. Uh, and then I learned about something called Texas toothpicks, which are jalapenos and onions shaved into straws that are lightly breaded and deep fried. So I guess they kind of look like fries. And third cuisine, Vietnamese. Jalapeno peppers are often found in pho, you know, the soup with the noodles and the broth, and also on banh mi sandwiches, which is usually pork or tofu or chicken topped with cilantro and jalapenos. Delicious. Okay, so nutrition and health information, lots of information out there. So, oh, okay, we have 30 seconds left before we gotta check on the poppers. So a raw jalapeno is 92% water, 6% 6, 6 carb, 1% protein, negligible, negligible amount of fat. And a three ounce serving of jalapeno is a good source of vitamin C, vitamin B6, 
vitamin E and vitamin K. Interesting. So that's kind of the overall. I have six health pieces of health information about jalapenos and capsaicin, which is that, you know, gives us the heat and health benefits. Let's go check on those poppers first. All right. I'm, I'm really excited about this. I love making something that I've pretty much only had at a restaurant, and then you realize, oh, I can make that at home. Oh, boy. I think these might be done. I think these might be done. You're supposed to put them under the broiler for just one minute. Maybe we'll do that. Sometimes our broiler doesn't really work, but hopefully it will. Okay, so let's turn that off. Turn the broiler on. Start timer. and then we'll take them out. Okay, so the six health benefits. I had no idea. I thought it was the seed chipotles are so good too. Yeah, I know. Such great information uh, out there to find. I was so happy to learn that. Yes, that it's the membranes. Sort of the seeds kind of get that too. And then chipotles. Okay, so health piece of information number one. Jalapeno peppers may help boost our metabolism. So some studies have found that capsaicin, the active ingredient, or the active compound, and other compounds called capsaicinoids, um, may boost our metabolism by about 5% per day, which is pretty awesome. Number two, jalapenos are a rich source of vitamin A and C and potassium. A and C, antioxidants, good for our vision, the A, vitamin A, vitamin C, good for our skin, potassium, good for our blood pressure. Number three, jalapenos have carotene, uh, which is an antioxidant. Oh, I guess, yeah, kind of the same as the vitamin A, but different. Um, also a good source of folate, vitamin K, and B vitamins. Number four, jalapeno peppers may help in pain relief. So the capsaicin in jalapeno peppers um, has been found to reduce pain by temporarily blocking our pain receptors in the area where it is applied. So we're talking about capsaicin that's taken from chili peppers and put into like a cream or a lotion or something therapeutic. They just put on externally, not necessarily putting a jalapeno on an injury. Um, so capsaicin lotions and patches are sometimes used to relieve pain, especially from um, things like pain from the shingles virus or diabetic nerve pain or rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, let's go get these peppers. Okay. capsaicin cream on their joints versus the people that used a, used a placebo. So, and also capsaicin may be added to things like nasal sprays to help people with migraines. Okay, number five, jalapeno peppers may help fight infection and bacteria. Compounds like capsaicin found in spicy chili peppers are especially powerful at slowing down the growth of common foodborne bacteria. So that's good, adding jalapenos to our food. Jalapeno peppers may also help keep our heart healthy. There was a study done where they found that capsaicin helped improve the health of people with metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome um, involves insulin resistance and obesity being the major components of metabolic syndrome. And also there's an increased risk of developing cardiovascular disease and type two diabetes. So they found that it helped people with metabolic syndrome, which could then therefore possibly help with heart health. Okay, 
So are there risks and precautions to take when consuming jalapenos? Well, the biggest one is if you're sensitive to heat from peppers, you know, it could give you an uncomfortable feeling in your mouth and in your throat. So if that's the case, maybe just have them less or, um, or these are things that you can do. If you still want to use jalapenos, um, buy the smooth ones, not the ones with the scars. So these are the ones with the scars. Buy the smooth. That's one. Also, wear gloves when you're handling them. Remove the membranes and the seeds. That's also key. And if you do eat a jalapeno that's spicier than you would like, there's the old tail of drinking milk, which is um, the best way to make that heat or the hotness in your mouth go away quicker. And they also say, there have been some studies saying that if you are prone to heartburn and reflux, jalapenos may make it worse. So maybe eat them in moderation. And I'm going to discuss how to store jalapenos. Fresh jalapenos that are whole, you can keep them at room temperature, away from heat or away from, you know, sun or whatever, or in the refrigerator. And if you slice one, keep it at in a container in the refrigerator. There we go. That's kind of it on the jalapeno, all the information out there. We've got jalapeno poppers right here. We are super excited. I'm going to show you again because it looks so good. Okay. Okay. And some of the cheese spilled out on the side and kind of got nice and brown and toasty on the pan, which I think is really good. I'm going to take pictures of this and put it on my Instagram too. So, whoopsie. Okay, there we go. Doesn't that look delicious. Definitely recommend making this for your next get together or your next happy hour or appetizer for your meals. So I will add that to my <coughs> Instagram. I will put my Instagram right here. IG is at Allie Sherpa. There we go. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all for joining the show today. Thank you for your comments. Can't wait to try these. Can't wait to tell you how they taste. I'm sure they're going to be delicious. And um, let me know what you think if you make them too. Have a great rest of your day. Talk to you next week. Have a good day.